Welcome to today's episode of the Normalized Surrogacy Podcast by Surrogacy Mentor. I'm your host, Marielle Schubert, three-time gestational surrogate and intake manager for Surrogacy Mentor and Modern Parent Mentor, where our aim is a safe, ethical, and enjoyable surrogacy journey for all. Today, I'm excited to have Allison with us. Allison is well-versed in the world of assisted reproductive technology, or art as we like to call it. She is an IVF mom of two, experienced GC, and now works as a life and certified fertility coach with the American Association of Drugless Practitioners. Welcome, Allison. Thank you, Marielle. It's great to be here. And I just want to say I love the intro of safe, ethical, and enjoyable experience. I'm sure you can relate. That was my Yes. It should be all three. They are not mutually exclusive in in our eyes, and that's really what we aim for um, with Surrogacy Mentor, and all surrogacy journeys should be that. And so uh, today's topic, uh, we're going to talk to you a little bit about becoming a GC as an experienced IVF mom and kind of what that process was like for you. So why don't you tell us a little bit about you your family, and what made you want to be a surrogate? Great. I'm going to take you back in time just a little bit with my own journey since it was a little unique. Most kids don't have experience with IVF because they don't typically have fertility problems. That is, that was not my experience. And I'm, while I was, I am so thankful for my journey. It was one of the most challenging experiences of my life. Um, So it took my husband and I, four years to uh, become pregnant through medical assistance. He had some fertility issues as well that caused us to have to use a donor sperm with getting pregnant with my two children. Uh, In the course of that process, we found that I was having trouble too. We thought that I would be fine. I was tested. Everything's fine. Um, But really just things weren't working between 11 IUI attempts, one IVF and a miscarriage. I was at my wit's end. So For all of you intended parents watching this, just know that I hear you, I see you, I bless you in this journey. Um, I we we switched doctors about three years in and found that it was vitamin D deficiency that caused my infertility, and I still had four embryos ready, and boom, took so five dollar vitamin was was the fix for you know tens of thousands of dollars of uh, IVF and also medically assisted reproduction. Oh, man. I know. And and again, you know, things happen for a reason, and, okay. but it's hard to see that in their mind. Yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> so I had my two children. That was my family design. I we just went into, I had Drew and Dylan. They are seven and nine now. And um, they're the light of my life. And I realized just through how hard it was to get pregnant and the village that it took to get me there with between acupuncturists, fertility coaches and nurses and, you know, uh, just family and friends. The list can go on for this entire time. Um, It it was a village that got me here. And so after my second, I remember uh, breastfeeding and and saying, you know, I kind of want to help someone else out the way I was helped. I contacted my fertility clinic uh, in Newport Beach, California, and uh, my doctor, who I had come to now call as my hero forever, uh, he said you would be a perfect candidate for surrogacy because you actually are the most fertile infertility patient I've ever had. <laughs> Vitamin D deficiency. And um, so voila, I, he hooked me up with a, um, an agency and uh, we were off the races. We, I felt very fortunate. I found a local couple who was in my home city. And they were about 10 miles away. And we just clicked in instantly in that first meeting and said, all right, I choose you, you choose me, we let's go. And that was, our journey was 2017 and 2018. And we are still family to this day. Um, my, my two young boys adopted the baby and showed him how to be a baby and a young boy and get messy and all those things. And I got to you know, have a new sister in my motherhood. And, you know, again, to this day, I'm just, I think of them as my own family. So well, that's, that's wonderful. And that, amazing. Um, I think that's a, a good thing to highlight that not all types of um, infertility um, and the female side are disqualifiers for surrogacy. Um, we've seen a couple of um, GCs who've 
used IVF to achieve their own pregnancies. The good thing about IVF and gestational surrogacy is really it just comes down to your uterus. If, as long as your uterus is in perfect working condition, um, having your own kind of struggles in fertility um, don't necessarily mean that you couldn't give that gift back to someone. And I love that you were able to do that. And what a cool way to kind of bring it back and bring a unique perspective, I think, to the family that you were carrying for, because you could truly understand um, where the intended mom was coming from with the struggles and the hope and all of that, which I think um, is a perspective that not many GCs can offer uh, to their intended parents, because many of us have not struggled with our own fertility um, and loss and IVF and all of that. Um, and it's kind of hard for us to relate to them on that level. Obviously, we want to help them. That's why we're doing this. But to be able to truly relate to that um, probably helped, I would assume, uh, develop a tighter relationship between the two of you because you really could see each other and kind of be in this 100 percent together. Um, then you were also prepared for what was coming, right? You already knew all about the medications and injections and kind of what that whole process looks like because aside from the egg retrieval, a surrogacy round of IVF um, is pretty much the same as if you were doing it for yourself. So how did your um, friends and family respond to you wanting to be a surrogate after, you know, going through all of your own struggles? Such a good question. I Because I have been so public with my my own struggle, I think it was easily digestible by my friends and family. I think everyone understood how passionate I was about becoming a mom and um, and seeing those struggles that it just, it was so, such a natural thing to say, yes, this makes total sense. Yeah. And it, it also helps, as you know, as a GC, if you have easy pregnancies, then, you know, it's much more understandable. Like, yeah, I can see why you would do this. Yeah. I mean, were some no's. There were some naysayers and a lot of um, negative talk. And and to me, that that kind of became my teacher. And because of my own um, secondary infertility with just, it was so unexplained at the time uh, mm -hmm. with, with my previous doctor, uh, I heard a lot of that negative talk already. And so it was almost like that was my practice. Like I, and it, it, I say no is a good teacher to a lot of my clients uh, because we hear a lot of that. Nope, it's too risky. No, the chances are low. No, the stats are this. So I don't think that you're going to get pregnant. And just really recognizing that, wait, this is my own journey. Like this is that those are great. Those are other people's journeys, but that has nothing to do with me. I have something radically differently and wildly different than any other one's experience. So having that practice with, you know, recognizing what was true. And what was just historical data, you know, that what applied to me, what didn't was really a good practice for going into uh, when fit friends and family said, oh, you couldn't pay me five million dollars for that. You could die. You could. I mean, all no. things. It's, it's just that was easy to just no. I'm turning the channel because I want to help someone. I trust my body, especially after what I had been through knowing that it could do this. And it was not only could do this, it was meant to do this. And what I, I'm so happy that I am honored to give that gift to someone who their body just didn't have the, that same opportunity. Yeah. And I think that is so hard for people who don't understand it to understand it, right? It's like you can tell somebody the sky is blue, but if for them it's black, they're never going to see it as blue. Those who don't, well, they just... You can try to change somebody's mind. And I think going into it, knowing why you're doing it and knowing that you're doing a good thing and having that kind of faith in the process can help with those naysayers. Because if you're wishy-washy going into it and then you have all of these people, whether they're close to you or strangers, that that is going to happen. At least once you're going to get some totally obscure comment that makes you think. And if you're not totally in it, well, 100 percent, you might start to question that and listen. So it's so good to go in fully prepared and just knowing you're doing a good thing, regardless of what anybody says, um, hopefully not in your immediate circle. But a lot of times that that is still true. I know in my case, it definitely was. Um, my in-laws were not supportive um, in the least. And um, 
So it was just one of those, we're just not going to talk about it with you then. You have your opinion and that's fine. I have mine and we're just going to let it go because I wasn't wanting to hear that because I knew I was doing something good. And so I wasn't going to let them tell me that what I was doing wasn't good. <laughs> it definitely right. helps to have that. Um, I always would tell myself and and I'm, I've heard it and used it in so many places in my life. And it's, what other people think of me is none of my business. So, so many people can have that feeling and it's up to me to, you know, really dive in deep and say, like, is this serving me now? Is this what I want now in my world? It's all that matters. People can think, people can have opinions. And that's, that's just none of my business. Yeah. And it's, it's really hard, like in the moments to like, know when you should or shouldn't like try to kindly educate somebody or. I find it was hard for me in the very beginning to like correct people. Um, but I don't need to explain my story to the checkout lady who's like, oh, when are you due? Are you so excited? Like at first I would start, well, it's not mine. I'm a surrogate. And then I'm at the checkout for 20 minutes explaining all of this. Like, you know, sometimes it's okay to just roll with it and just move on. <laughs> and then there are certain times where it is good because a lot of, I will say most people who don't understand it, their comments might seem hateful or hurtful because you know you're doing something good. But majority of the time, it's not coming from a negative place. It's just coming from misinformation or people who just genuinely don't understand. And at least in my experience, I have found that majority of people, once they get it, will at least stop with the comments. They may not fully understand, but once you explain it, they, you know, seem to come around a little bit more. So what about your kids? How did they respond to, I know they were probably, you know, right on that edge of understanding what you were doing. Um, sounds like they have a good relationship with your Soro baby now, but like when you were pregnant, were they involved in the process? Did they kind of know what was happening or were they kind of too young at that point? So my children were two and four at the time and, and they had we, we were very open with just, you know, the struggles that mommy had and trying to bring them into this world. And we were just so excited that they were here, you know, just spirit, God, universe, whatever you want to call on your end, just really brought them to me and, and my husband. And uh, so we were really open with that. And so we, we explained how, you know, how, how mommy had some issues. Well, there are other mommies that have issues too. But their babies are trying to get to them as well. So sometimes we need a little help. And so there was there was a lot of conversation about how I have the I have something that this other mommy doesn't have. And so I want to give and and let her her borrow what mommy has to to give to her. And I they don't call me mommy anymore. I'm pretty sure I get called bra more than anything. So uh, but yes, it was it was very, uh, you know, like, oh, it's from a place of we're giving this. And, and so they responded well. There were a lot of questions. They're like, well, how does that, like, they just didn't understand because that was beyond. So we kept it at the, um, just their babies are trying to get to, to that mommy. And I got something that will help with that. And, you know, my, my two-year-old at the time loved calling me the house, you know, you're the house. Yes, I love that. <laughs> I was the house. And, and, uh, but they, they seemed to get it. And I just, we, I brought them in. I said, I'm going to need your help too, um, to, you have to show baby Aaron the ropes. You have to show, you know, all, the, all that stuff that boys know how to do. And so they're like, all right, I got a job. And, and it was, it was really cool to just experience that we are adopting this family and, and mentoring them to become the best family that they can be. And so. It was it was very positive. There there weren't a lot of questions because they just were too young for that. Had they been older, like now, I um I am going through another journey, and they have different questions, and it's just yep. well, as that works specifically, and so yep. those are harder to answer. So for all you moms of older tweens, you know that's it's it's a new journey. <laughs> yes, and mine for my last journey were at that point where they started to understand a little bit more, and then came into trying to figure out the birds and bees talk in an age appropriate way because they because I've done three journeys were kind of under this impression that you get pregnant by going to the doctor's office <laughs> and that's how babies come and so trying to find that line well that's not how all babies come and it, it gets a lot because they have a lot more specific questions so 
Tell us a little bit about your surrogacy experience. You said that you lived in close proximity to the intended parents. So were they able to be super involved with the pregnancy, um, appointments, things like that, and the delivery? Like, tell us what that was like with having intended parents so close, because my experiences were all very far away. So I never had that kind of daily possibility of um, meeting with them. I I think that's a great question. I think that everyone involved in my journey, we were all very respectful of each other's time. You know, I, I, because of my unique situation, I understood that this, this may be where there's a lot of um, anxiety and anxiousness with it. And, you know, I, I recognize from my own waiting time periods, there was a, like, you're waiting for the shoe to drop, right? Like just there's something's going to go wrong. So, so I really tried to keep an open dialogue with that. Like, you know, I understand this time is hard and, and I probably didn't do the right things either, but it it really was, was more empathy. I think was a theme that we, we all had, like, I hear you. I, I recognize in this two week wait there, it's, it's a tough time to be I'm just sitting there. So why don't we just get together for dinner and start having talking about something other than this? You know, and we we created a friendship from it. Um, you know, almost with the umbrella of this bond that we had as GC and IP. So so it really kind of a distraction in those moments of like, oh my gosh, we've been waiting so long for this. I I hope it works. And maybe what if it doesn't? So playing that game was. Our, our fun game of distracting ourselves. Yeah. Do you think it made it harder for you in that beginning because you could truly understand that the angst in that two week wait? Because I know my, at least my first journey, especially I went into this like, oh, I didn't quite understand fully where they were coming from and why they couldn't be excited and all of those things. I, you know, I could imagine, but I really didn't understand until I had my first miscarriage as a gestational carrier. And then I got it. I was like, oh, OK, this is what this feels like. So do you think kind of personally knowing that weight made it harder on you as a GC because you could truly understand how she was feeling? It, in a way, it gave me another job. You know, my job wasn't just to be the house, like my two-year-old said, but it was actually to be, you know, a source of support. Like, I get it. I know it, you know, and and I also know the miracle that can ensue. So, yeah. so it was just hold on, you know, like I understand it seems bleak or it doesn't. But just recognizing the range of emotions instead of like, oh, why aren't you excited? We're here. I'm going to get pregnant. What up? Rainbows and unicorns. Yep. <laughs> no, that's so true because you had the after, the happy after that you could offer them. Like, I get it. I know it. But look, look at here. Look at my kid. Oh, the next one. I think you were able to offer that hope in a different way. And so were they able to be really involved with the pregnancy? Is that something that they wanted? They were. And so so we really aligned. And this is this is a unique story. It's not for everyone, but this just happened to be mine. Um, we just were really aligned with that transparency and communication were our number one, uh, or number one and number two things that were just non-negotiables. Like if there was a problem, I needed to hear about it and vice versa. And um, something came up like emotion or feeling or whatever it was, we need to talk about it. And so we really kept open lines of communication. They, I was fine with what it, this was their journey. They had not only, you know, put so much emotional investment into it, they had also put a financial investment into it that was significant. And so I wanted them to have the journey that they dreamed of. And so they were, they said, well, we'd like to be involved if you're okay. And, and I, I was okay with it. I mean, as moms, like you lose the, the like meek, you know, I'm, I'm modded now. It's fine. Come on in. <laughs> yeah. Once you've gone through labor and delivery, none of this matters anymore. Go for it. <laughs> and and I think because they were involved with um, I probably 90% of the appointments, except at the end where you have to do the stress testing pretty much every day at that point. Yeah. Uh, but they were in the delivery room. And that was really special in that it was, you know, here's your baby, not not to me, to them. It was, they got first first in the interaction with Aaron and it was lovely. And, um, you know, just the fact that we could share that just it, all three of us together in that situation, my, my husband and me do, but the three of us really were bonded in that moment. And so yeah. it's a special moment today. And some people are, ex- they don't want that same experience. That's totally okay. So that's yeah. my advice to GCs is like really keeping 
be, don't try to be something that they want, be what you want, like just whatever you're comfortable with, say it, declare it and stick to it uh, yep. because it's your journey too. Yep. And um, what's funny, I just did an episode with an experienced uh, GC who's, well, experiencing GC. She's currently pregnant and kind of navigating all of that um, currently. And her thoughts on their involvement have kind of changed throughout the process. You know, she didn't think that she was going to want the type of relationship that she wanted and then kind of was navigating like, oh, well, I guess I did want them more involved. It's just finding your voice and being able to speak up and say that so that you're not kind of in this place where you feel weird and afterwards, like, well, you should have said something. We would have been there. We just didn't think you wanted us. And so really finding your voice and and knowing what you are and aren't comfortable with and being okay that that may change. You may think you want them in the delivery room and you get there and you're like, oh God, all these people are looking at me and I want I want everyone out. That's okay too. But that's amazing that they were able to be there. And it sounds like you all are still um, close. Do you guys still have a, a close relationship now that it's been a little while or? It, it is. I mean, obviously our, our visits are a little less frequent. They now have another son. And um, so they're, they're very busy and because that's a lot too, um, you know, very young age. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yes, I, we still just, I, there's so much reverence for each other, for the process and for everything. And just, you know, and the real thing, and especially with the GC that you just interviewed, you know, just that, that's a testament to the flexibility, yeah. but have flexibility with each other and, and recognizing that it's not personal. It is just truly making the experience as, as, beneficial for all parties involved, yeah. not just baby, not just mom, not just dad, not just JC, all yeah. parties involved. Yeah. And uh, that, that I think is, is really in service to the whole process. So, so as far as our relationship, I, I love it because it could be a quick text saying, you know, happy birthday to uh, whichever one is their birthday, yes. or we haven't seen each other in a while. Let's go grab some dinner. And, and it's like, we pick up whenever, you know, that we never left off. So uh, we're definitely bonded in spirit in so many ways. I love that. And so how did your journey to parenthood yourself and helping others achieve theirs um, kind of lead you to this new role that you are doing um, in your professional life? Great question. And as as Marielle said, I'm a fertility certified fertility coach with the American Association of Drugless Practitioners. And really, I think that I could not have this role had I not had the jury that uh, it was rife with loss, with agony, with, uh, with, like I said, no's and high risk and all the, all the negative thoughts that come in. And, and truly, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. Um, I remember one moment I saw uh, my cousin, we were on a vacation and she was, she was 17 weeks, I think, pregnant. And, uh, she felt the baby kick for the first time, like truly kick. Like as, as a first time mom, you let go, oh, how is that? No, like, you know. Yeah, that not. first one. <laughs> That's what I've been waiting for. So it was that and, and her husband was there and there was a lot of the firsts, you know, like that first feeling, that love that is just so bonded of experiencing that. And, and I was three years into my journey of not being able to be pregnant and so many failed cycles, failed losses or failed, um, yeah, failed cycles. And I had to run in the other room and it were, we were staying in that, uh, uh, like a house and there was a little casita and I went to the casita and I just screamed the most agonizing scream. Oh. The one that hurts your muscles to the point where you just feel your body ripping apart because of just agony. And, and it was just tears. And I remember then getting myself together and going back to the table, back to the other house part it like nothing happened. And it really was a testament to the suffering and silence that women who are going through infertility or not uh, the news of not being able to carry or the news of just the, the no's, the challenges of this that were unexpected. Uh, I just, I, I will remember that moment and I'm getting kind of emotional because of it. I will yep. remember that moment forever. And I just, in my client's I just, I see them and I hear them. I was them in those moments. And I just want nothing more than to put my arm around them and just say, you're not alone, even in unique fertility journey. And let's navigate it together. Let's get in the boat 
and we will get to the other side together. Yeah. And so I think that with everything, with with the surrogacy, with the infertility, with um, challenges, with even, you know, marital challenges, it, it drew me to this place of wanting to just add to the total sum of love in this world through family, community, and uh, self-love. And that's that's why I got here. And I couldn't be more fulfilled in my role, in my legacy, in my work, and in just my current life. That's amazing. I love that. And it it's so hard when you are the person suffering or on the other end, someone who is around somebody who they know is experiencing, um, you know, infertility or things like that. And it's such a hard place because I I can speak from my experiences, too, that, you know, you see somebody who's pregnant and you want to be happy for them and you genuinely are happy for them and sad for you at the same time. Just because I'm crying right now doesn't mean that I'm not so happy for you and doesn't mean that I don't want you to tell me things. It just means I'm so excited and so sad. And those things can be together. Um, and that can definitely be a tough, a tough spot to be in. And so having somebody who can really empathize with that on your side and just know that, I think that's such an amazing gift that you're able to offer other people um, within the realm of surrogacy and outside of that, just people navigating their own journeys through parenthood and life. I think it's it's a great thing that you're able to offer people. How often do we feel like we're just drowning in information, but starving for wisdom through this fertility journey? I mean, Dr. Google is so confused. Yes. <laughs> the, that That was part of my issue was that I felt so lost. It was like, wandering aimlessly through an unknown area and just hoping to get back on track. So I, I feel like I can provide some sort of, as a coach, uh, provide a GPS. Like, this is our plan. This is our path. It may go off, you know, depending on the traffic and obstacles. However, we have a like a foundation of lifestyle, nutrition, mindset, and um, just, you know, compatibility. So it really is. I I know when I was going through it, I was like, I'd look up something and then I'd look up something else and then it would be totally misaligned. And doctors, they just need to get you through. So they're not there to just put their arm around you and just go, it's okay. They do their best. I, I loved my doctors. And I just felt that some additional support would have been helpful to create the action plan for transformation that I was looking for. Yep. No, and that's a... Perfect way to put it, for sure. And so now that you've kind of been through all of this, um, what advice do you have for intended parents who are struggling and women who are considering becoming a gestational surrogate? Because you have this kind of unique uh, perspective on both. Very true. And and I love that question. Uh, as far as the GC, don't settle. Do what feels right. There always will, even though you're going to think that it should last a certain amount of time, you'd ask someone who's considering gestational carry. And I'm sure people would say, well, it takes about nine months, 10 months. No, it takes longer. You're talking a year and a half to two years, depending on legal, depending on all the processes. So yep. don't settle. This is a relationship you will potentially have for years. So if there's something not right. Don't feel like you have to say yes, even though an agency is saying to say yes or be pushed into a situation. Do what's right for you. Do what's right for your family and your peace of mind. You'll know. You'll know when it's right. You don't have to, to guess it. You've got all the inner wisdom. So that would be my number one. And um, and this is for GCs and IPs, that the communication piece, be totally honest with each other. If there's something that's not feeling right, each side wants to know. The, the worst thing to happen is that you're overly polite and you clam up and you don't take you, be your self-advocate for your own okay. journey. So okay. just put it out on the table, set that up at the beginning, saying we are going to have a candid relationship that will we will be totally transparent and honest. Because the worst thing after so much time, energy, money, everything, if there's something that's found out that just is not expected and absolutely not aligned with your original agreement, it will be a problem. So transparency and communication. Yep. And I can say, I know I've talked about this several times. My second journey was very much like that at, at the end where we were very close. We had a very great relationship. And then towards the end, after the baby came, they didn't want to 
push him on me and make me feel uncomfortable. And I didn't want to ask to like see them or hold him because I didn't want them to feel uncomfortable. And so nobody was saying it. And ultimately, I did want to hold the baby and they wanted me to hold him. But we were all being too careful of each other's feelings that then neither of us got what we wanted. And that could be anything, not just after birth, but with everything. Yeah, being finding your voice, even though I can say personally it can be hard, but it's it's very important for your sake and theirs because they don't want. I know intended parents don't go into this wanting to walk all over you and only have it their way. They are very caring and um, mindful of you and your feelings as well. And so voice them so that they know, because if you don't, then they may be doing something that makes you feel uncomfortable or whatever or vice versa. But yeah, communication, I think, is absolutely top, top on the list there. That brings us to the end of this episode of the Normalized Surrogacy Podcast by Surrogacy Mentor. I want to thank our very special guest, Allison, for joining us for this Music chat today. Bit. Be sure to check us out online at surrogacymentor.com and modernparentmentor.com if you're interested in knowing whether surrogacy is right for you and take our two-minute easy quiz on our website if you're interested in becoming a surrogate. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast to learn more about gestational surrogacy and how to have a safe, ethical, and enjoyable surrogacy journey. Talk to you next time.